greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about how Ikoria has broken both MTGO and Magic Arena. Now, to make sure we're all on the same page, I'm not talking about the cards from Ikoria being too strong and breaking magic and breaking standard, although there are people who are already reporting that there are a number of cards that are causing big disruptions. I mean, to be fair, and this is really a subject for another video, but to be fair, the way that Wizards knew like options for designing sets, the whole, we're gonna kind of throw away res research and development and just go with big flashy crazy nonsense, that sort of fire approach to it has its drawbacks. And one of those is leading to an unbalanced standard. And when you combine that fact with the other fact that Ikoria is a rushed, ham-fisted kind of mess of a set, you can see why you, you put them together and you get a scenario that is not good times in terms of standard play. But really, we're here to talk about how the functionality of these programs has been massively negatively impacted by Ikoria. Now, this is something that does happen more frequently in MTGO, where I mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna be fair, let's be real. Anybody who's used MTGO for any reasonable amount of time is very aware that MTGO has never actually been a fully functional program. There are a number, a number of issues with MTGO. One is that all the magic cards don't work. We actually did a live stream once where we went through all, and I mean like all of the cards that had bug issues. And there was hundreds and hundreds of them. Some were minor bugs, some were you can't play this card at all. And MTGO is so buggy that it's a known fact that you just have to reboot the client on a regular basis. And Wizards of the Coast considers that such a well-known thing that let's say you don't reboot your client frequently enough and you play in a tournament and you have all kinds of lag and crashing issues, they won't give you a refund because they'll say it's your fault for not knowing you had to reboot the client. So, I mean, in a way, are we surprised at all that Ikoria is causing problems for MTGO? Because what, what is Ikoria? Like I said, it's a jumbled mess. Ikoria is a set that was never really meant to be in its current incarnation. The original idea for Ikoria was it was supposed to come like years from now. We weren't supposed to get Ikoria for a while. Ikoria was basically just supposed to be a twinkle in someone's eye at this point where what happened was Wizards of the Coast decided to collapse Throne of Eldraine from two sets into one set. And as a result, they had a hole they needed to fill. And instead of filling that hole, they just dug a big empty hole and called it Ikoria and just <laughs> pushed it out to us where nothing, nothing about Ikoria works together properly. The trailer, the story, the set, all of it is just disjointed and all over the place. But focusing specifically on the cards, Wizards has tried what they called multiple ambitious mechanics with this set. The biggest the biggest and most troublesome one being mutate, obviously. The way that Arena has to be reprogrammed to accommodate for mutate, I would say is the biggest change. You could theoretically, I suppose, say it's companion, but I mean, companion only exists on 10 cards and it really just makes the game go, okay, take the companion rule that applies to this card, apply it to their deck if it's valid, they're good to go put the card on the outside. So Companion doesn't feel like nearly as much of a problem as Mutate, as Mutate, honestly, at least in recent memory, is the most confusing mechanic for people that Wizards has, has, has ever created. Honestly, it is somewhat akin to banding simply in its random, unnecessary complexity, where on, on the surface, you go, okay, Mutate is just mashing two creatures together. But what does that actually entail? It leads to all kinds of rules issues. So when you compound, like there's a, there's a number of issues that have gone on in terms of random, like breaking of older magic cards. People have reported playing like split cards and not getting to choose which half of the split card that they can play. It just shuts that down. There are complaints of the Godzilla styles essentially being 
mandatory. And when you try and go and shut them off, it automatically resets them and forces you to see them again. There's people complaining going, I don't like Godzilla. I want nothing to do with Godzilla. I just was given this style as a reward for playing in one of your events, but I don't want it. I want nothing to do with it. And it keeps turning itself on. So it's breaking people's immersion in magic, which I actually think is a valid complaint because I'm someone who doesn't care about Godzilla and I don't want to see Godzilla on the board. I'm not interested in seeing that at this time. I want to see regular magic cards with the regular magic art. And on top of the like resetting people's Godzilla styles back on there, there are also reports of the Godzilla style basically turning on and off and on and off back and forth during the course of a magic game. So you have a whole bunch, a whole bunch of cards that just don't work the way they're supposed to. There's individual reports. I'm not going to go over each individual card, but either way, a bunch of magic cards have been broken. We're seeing that this has affected arena on a number of levels. One is the shuffler. It's pretty hard to argue that there hasn't been a substantial change to the way the shuffler works as I am getting more one land and no land hands than ever, right? Like that's just, that that's what's going down. Actually, funnily enough, I just remembered, this is something actually I believe Desolator was the first one to talk about. There's a situation with the player drafts where you can join a player draft and you're in the lobby for the player draft and there's a certain amount of time that has to tick down before the draft kicks off. Well, everyone has to click ready, like ready to go, and then the whole thing starts. But if not everybody clicks ready, the timer ticks down, and then you get to the point where it just kicks everybody out of the draft. So instead of like grabbing a new person and shoving them in with the other ready people, it just apparently dumps the whole queue. And if a bunch of people are in there screwing around doing this sort of thing, or this is another possibility, people just aren't able to get the get it to initialize because Arena's been acting really wonky, right? I mean, you'll try and start a game, it'll go for like a minute and a half. The amount of games where you play that awful scenario where at first you just think it's your opponent, where you're like, come on, buddy, come on, buddy, come on, while you sit there, while you're both just floating heads, nobody has a hand or anything that's going on, and you're just like, anytime now, anytime now, and I keep running into this scenario where you see the little blue line below your opponent's head, running down, 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 finally get to the end, and that's when it goes, okay, here's your hand. And then you still can't play. You sit there while it runs down on your opponent again. Like it's happening with such high frequency that it can't just be people out there because we have to acknowledge there are certain people who play on arena who intentionally will sit there hoping that you'll concede for an easy win. So they may not even be at their computer. They just start the game up and leave. I've also had reports from people. They've specifically told me themselves that they are building bots and the bot will just sit there in the game hoping that your opponent forfeits or at most just playing lands. So that sort of thing does exist and we need to acknowledge that that's a possibility when this sort of thing happens. But with the frequency that it's occurring, there's no chance that's what's going on here, right? It's, it's literally a massive error with Ikoria. Now on top of that, you add in the fact that based on the, the world situation with Magic the Gathering, and by that I mean Right now, we should be deep in pre-release weekend. We should be enjoying the Magic pre-release. I, I do feel the loss. I do feel the loss keenly. I really enjoyed pre-release weekends. It was a big thing for me. So, we don't have pre-release weekends. In fact, you can't really go and play physical Magic anywhere unless, you know, I mean, you have like a roommate or something who plays. Either way, we can't get together and play Magic anymore. What does that lead to? It leads to an influx of people getting into Arena. That's indisputable. There are people who have told me recently that they started playing Arena that I never in a million years would have expected to be someone who got into Arena. Actually, I saw them as someone who'd be more likely to just set their cards aside and be like, you know what, I'll just wait until Paper Magic comes back or be done with Magic than be likely to get into Arena. So we do have a gigantic influx of more players and that could be putting strain on the server. I, I mean, there are a number of people who reported it and I ran into it myself. The situation where update, it just basically is looking for updates, looking for updates, looking for updates and it's doing it five, 10, 15 minutes and you're like, okay, are you looking for updates? Are you gonna do anything? Can I actually 
log in, please. I would like to play some Magic the Gathering. So there's a whole bunch of these errors coming together. Now, the, the service load, that's not something I'm particularly going to hold against Wizards because we need to be reasonable here. It's all well and good to point the figure finger. Did I say figure? Anyways, it's all well and good to point the finger when they are doing something wrong, but this isn't a scenario they could have easily anticipated. There's no way that Wizards could have seen six months ago, oh, we're going to have a massive spike in demand for our digital services when Ikoria releases because the world's going to be crazy, right? Like, there's no way they could have known that. So them not being prepared for the load is somewhat understandable. Under the current circumstances, it's going to be difficult to quickly ramp up additional resources. And so that part is totally understandable. But the mechanics and cards being broken with, Ik with Ikoria is not understandable because even though Ikoria was a quickly slapped together, write your essay right before you have to turn it in style work, it still remains as a fact that Wizards, even when they're lazily slapping something together, does have to do it months and months in advance. Ikoria, while it was a filler that was hastily created, was also something that was created months and months and months ago, which means that the people programming Arena had plenty of time to sort out the bugs. Like there's pl plenty of time to do that, but obviously Wizards has not dedicated the amount of resources to Arena that's necessary. And when you combine that with the absolute lazy, not thought out creation of Ikoria to the point where Wizards has been scrambling to patch all the holes with Mutate. Mutate's like a big old leaky boat. And they just put it out into the water going, there's no holes in this boat. And meanwhile, there's water flowing in from like a hundred holes. You're like, oh my God, I don't have enough fingers to plug all these holes. That's Ikoria in a nutshell. So I just wanted to come by and talk about that because obviously it's frustrating. And the crazy thing is, is I could have spent less time recording this video than the amount of time I would wait to just to be able to log into Arena right now. So this is par for the course with MTGO, and it's part of what made Arena succeed, is that MTGO was clunky and non-functional, and Arena was generally, generally sleek and half-decently functioning. There was a point in the past where Arena was somewhat clunky and janky and needed some fixing, and then it feels like they fixed it. The searches happened a lot faster, you didn't have nearly as many issues, but not only has Ikoria brought in new issues, we're seeing a return to these old issues like tutor effects taking way longer. It's really frustrating to deal with. So let me know your thoughts and your experiences in the comments below, my friends. Thanks for coming by. Big shout out to all my patrons and channel members. Thank you very much for supporting what I do here. And I will see all of you lovely people very soon.